Welcome to episode 108 of Brain Thunder. I've got a question for you guys today. Do you like going to work? Well, Harry here with us today certainly does. With us today is Harry Maxwell, who's recently been named as one of the top 50 UK technology sales figures. He's also worked in some of the most fastest growing unicorns in the industry, as well as big executives like Adobe. Harry is also a fellow LSE alum like us. Welcome, Harry. Hello, Martha. Welcome. Hi, Brain Thunder. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks of for coming. Course. Really happy to have you. No pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So um, we'd like to kick off today's episode um, where we're going to be talking about millennials in the workplace with work ethic and, and more specifically millennials work ethic. So generally... Nothing controversial. <laughs> I'm sure nobody has any opinions on this at all. Exactly. So generally millennials are... They're allegedly... Um, privy of a very self-centered work ethic at best or no work ethic at worst. So they care about performing their task well, but they don't really care about how this fits into what the rest of the team does. It's quite self-centered. Do you think that's just part of the hate rhetoric against millennials? Or do you think it actually precludes us from doing our job well? I think there are two sides always to every story. So millennials do have a bad reputation. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that and are aware that that is out there i think some of the people that i know that we know and, and some people said around here are some of you know the hardest workers that i know you'll be in the office late you wouldn't question it if you need to be there mm -hmm. you'll be there to get the job done so mm -hmm. in some respects i think that generalization is quite unfair but then on the other hand i do also think millennials can be slightly precious about the types of tasks that they may want to do at work but it's very slightly different because, um, you know, for example, if someone said, hey, do you want to have a job and just get the coffees? You'd probably say no. And then if someone said, hey, do you want to have this job and get the coffees, but mm. you can call yourself a first year investment banking analyst, mm. people would say yes. But do you think that comes from a place of, oh, I'm too good to, to serve coffee? Or do you think it comes from a place of, I care about developing my skills and I'm just not really sure how serving coffee would help? So you're saying it's all about branding, basically, that it doesn't matter what you're doing if you've got like a title that comes with it. Exactly. Yeah. Make millennials feel they're changing the world yeah. and they'll be fine to do it or that they've... I think when we have grown up with the internet and everything's been much more accessible, university's much mm. more accessible, mm. information's much more accessible, more than it has ever been in the past. And I think that makes us feel a lot more empowered. And, and I used the word earlier, again, in terms of precious mm. about what it is mm -hmm. that we want to do. So if people feel like what they're doing is to get to that better place, then mm -hmm. they'll do it. Yeah. If it's just, you know, you need to do X, then it's, it's, it's no, I, I want to do more with my life, I want to do more with mm. my time. Agreed. So, so I don't think it's down to the actual nature of the job. I think it's down to having a clear path of where this job is leading. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, as for example, in the fashion industry, you have to start from, you know, an assistant position from very low down. I think people will do that if they know that there is this clear path that I will eventually get to the point where I want to be. But if it's just a dead end, then it makes sense that we wouldn't want to commit to that long term. Yeah, but with the subject of titles now, I feel like everybody has a title. Like, yes. everyone's a, an executive director, associate of this, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. What does that like, even mean anymore? And when you look Age at 23, a I was senior director. <laughs> I, I was like, everyone was going Humble around, brag like, over senior here. director, <laughs> senior director. <laughs> Business cards after the show, Harry. But then it's funny that you go to like a company that doesn't do like title Olympics, as I call it. And then yeah. it's like, now I'm not a senior director. Now I'm like, I, I want it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, and I, and and the person I went to uni with, exactly. so he's an associate director. What am I doing wrong? Should I, should I move companies? But we're going to talk about moving jobs in a bit. But then that changes per sector as well, exactly. right? Exactly. It really does. It really, it's really dependent upon that. So you, we mentioned that millennials have a pretty bad reputation when it comes to work. But then at the same time, on the one hand, they have the reputation of being lazy, entitled, and slow flaky. And we are also the burnout generation because we work so hard and there's no really distinction between work time and leisure time. It all just merges into one because you have your emails on your phone, you go home and... Um, even to some extent, you can say that like your social media can be a form of branding. So you're going home and you're working on that in a sense. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile those two images of millennials of, of being lazy, but at the same time burning out? I think there's a couple things. So in terms of branding, and I, I will answer your question, but in a slightly roundabout way, mm -hmm. I think as millennials are seen as lazy or being younger, it could also be seen as being inexperienced. It's very important to actually 
think through your brand and how you present yourself and how you can mm. shift things towards your advantage. So, for example, I work for a technology company, but actually a lot of technologies are very new. Mm -hmm. So that can be used as a strength to say, hello, I'm actually a millennial who's grown up with this stuff and I have these expectations of, you know, when I interact with a business mm -hmm. or whatever and here's what you should be doing. And as I'm, you know, the end user and somebody who's grown up with this, I'm actually in a in a better position to do that. So you can kind of try to then flip things that may be that view kind of on its head. Mm -hmm. So in terms of your question, in terms of reconciling the lazy image with mm. with burnout, I think it it is interesting. Um, I, I don't really know the answer. What do you guys think? Well, I think generally the idea of branding has changed because you think of Generation Xers, right? And they would watch their TV show and they would have this 30-minute advertising after that. And, you know, they understand how advertising works in that theoretical way, but they don't know how to make it theirs. They don't know how to mm. make it personal. But think of us, think of millennials. I mean, we're experts on marketing ourselves. We're masters of that. We're natives, right? I mean, we do it on social media. We do it all the time and we do it often. Um, so I think it's just oh, the whole point is between the different types of branding there are. But I'm just wondering, if you bring this to work, if you bring this attitude to work, is your employer happy that you're bringing this personal brand that you've built? I, th I think so. I think um, personal brand is very important because, for example, again, in, in leaders, mm -hmm. you know, for the CEO, you may want to hire like a really smart numbers guy mm -hmm. or you may want a big charismatic CEO that's mm -hmm. going to kind of fire everybody up if the company's been going through a downturn. Mm -hmm. So... Personal brand is important in the sense, and again, I think it does help you find your fit a little bit more in, in terms of companies. Mm. But at the same time, haven't you found that a lot of our generation don't want their employees to find them on social media? Yeah. So why exactly. is there that distinction between the two? Well, I mean, firstly, you might be doing something in your spare time that your employers may not appreciate, mm. firstly. So I think that should be kept separate. Um, well, it but it's also just yeah. having, like, I think you do need to have distinction in your life. Like you said, otherwise it just overlaps mm. and you never have any downtime. I mean, I wouldn't say it's healthy to, like, compartmentalize everything you do, mm. but I think it is having that clear distinction. It's even, like, slightly off topic but you know how psychologists say how you shouldn't have like your laptop or anything work related in your bedroom because yeah. it stops you from being able to sleep mm -hmm. there's loads of studies about that it's kind of like that on a bigger scale mm -hmm. like yeah you don't want it to all blend in you need to have se like separate aspects of your life otherwise you wouldn't I don't feel like you can perform properly in any of them exactly. so that's um a really interesting point because actually one of the things I'm grappling with at the minute is trying to merge my kind of professional and personal brand and, mm. and that whole thing. So mm. one of the things that I do believe is that people should bring their whole self to work. Mm. Um, and actually when you do that, it, it's better. And okay, yes, you know, you may have gone to like a really nice restaurant or gone for some drinks with friends, but actually, you know, that's not the end of the world. I mean, yeah, yeah obviously mm. there are limits that you'd want to expose mm. that to. Mm. Um, so, so at the minute I'm trying to actually work out how to do that so before I used to have two different Twitter profiles yeah. mm. one for work wow. and I would tweet you know hashtag thought leadership yeah. and one for personal and I'll be like hashtag love island um, <laughs> the commitment. so I, I'm trying to now actually marry the two together because yeah, right. for me as well I was like it's kind of weird to have these two yeah, right. identities when actually two I am I am one me and thinking through you know what is it that yeah. I'm here to do how is it I want to communicate so mm. yeah LinkedIn obviously that's in originally professional Twitter mm. I'm merging mm. um, Instagram for now hands off it's that's personal separate. only yeah. I don't think I'm quite ready to embrace the workplace on Instagram yet but hopefully I'll get there I agree with that and I also think that generally organizational brands and personal brands have shrunk and, and I generally think that in the past, when I was thinking about branding and advertising, it was more corporate mm. and it was more impersonal. Whereas now I think with the rise of influencers and their relatability, it's all become more human and more personal. So I definitely agree that when you do exactly. bring it to work, when you do say, well, we we'll have this hobby. I, I like to say cook or I like to horse ride. I, do, I like to do this. You're more of a, the, you're not just part of an organization. You, you just, you're, I guess you have chosen that company. You know, you're, you're bringing your skills and your entire self to add to that company's value and that's just so much more useful than a nine-to-five job where you know you do your nine-to-five and then there's just this absolute 
you know, gap and, and wall. But does the corporate world want that from you, though? I think, well, I think increasingly the corporate world is becoming more open to it. Mm. I think they're looking for very well-rounded workers. You know, I was like, well, do you do sports? You know, do you do this? Do you do that? They want to see this well-rounded persona because at the end of the day, all of those different hobbies show the way that you interact, say, with other people, what you like doing, what your skills are. And it shows that you're human. You know, you're not just a robot that's just only going to enjoy work. I don't think that's what's desirable. Yeah, exactly. And similarly, um, I think at a leadership level, it's done particularly well. So a lot of CEOs will have their own mm -hmm. Twitter accounts mm -hmm. or Instagram accounts, and they will, you know, they'll share both, you know, we love our company, we love what we're building, we love our people, you know, mm -hmm. here's me on stage at the conference, mm -hmm. here's me in this office meeting a team, but then also, you know, posting about mm -hmm. downtime, taking time out with their family and mm -hmm. showing both those personal sides mm -hmm. can be really strong. Mm -hmm. And I think for millennials, the challenge that we have is then working out a lot of the time who exactly it is that we are. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, because we've kind of, and we have been brought up, we've been told, you know, you have to hide yourself, you have to be careful on social mm -hmm. media. So I think, and particularly now with data privacy, we have a big guard up mm -hmm. and actually trying to now merge the two can be quite difficult. It's literally taken me like, and it's, it's still ongoing, mm -hmm. years I've been thinking about, you know, yeah. Yeah. who is it that I want to be in the world mm -hmm. and then kind of how does my workplace and personal law all sit, yeah. all sit below that. It's like figuring out how much to filter it, I guess. And exactly. What you do and don't share. Um, but in a way, people get to watch you grow as well. So it's kind of yeah. interesting. Um, I don't know, like I'm not really into personal branding so much in the sense of like LinkedIn posts. Mm -hmm. I don't really talk about my career or any, any of the social media outlets I use. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. It's not that I don't enjoy my job. I do. I just, I keep it quite separate. Um, I'm I never some, yeah, I'm never <laughs> someone that would share like, oh, my company's uh, had great quarterly mm. results, blah, 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 or we won this award. Like a lot of people do share that on LinkedIn and mm. it's nice to see. But it's not something like I personally would do. Mm -hmm. And like going back to the CEOs when they post, again, I don't know, maybe I'm a cynic, but I really, <laughs> like if I see a CEO post something, like, like, like yeah, yeah, like mm. was uh, like if, if like my CEO posts something on LinkedIn, I just feel like, oh, maybe their assistant wrote it yeah. or um, a little bit like when we spoke about when politicians tweet as well. Yeah. You There's just so don't know. Yeah. 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 But it is cool. It adds like a new facet to work that in a way, like, well, other generations didn't have that. They would go to their job and then they'd go home to their family or to wherever and that's their evening done. Whereas now it does all interact. So that's niche for us, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the interesting there is people kind of, the way they define themselves and, and live their lives will be very different. So for example, you know, if you think about your passions and, and your hobbies on mm -hmm. social media, that is, you know, your cooking, your mm. travel, and and that's you. Mm. Um, whereas for me, it's like my kind of mm. passion life, as weird as it sounds, is more of the work side and the career side and, and helping mm. businesses grow. Whereas for some people, it could be, you know, a relationship. Yeah. Um, and, and they love spoiling that all over social media. Um, so, yeah. so it's very variable. I think it comes down to the individual. Yeah, I'm very similar to you. I think, mm. you know, it's all about thinking about your legacy and thinking about what you want to be remembered by. And if you feel that your personality is so interlinked with your job and what you do and who you are, then it's obviously going to be much more like that. But I would like to ask, how is it, how have you found the difference between, you know, working for a smaller company, obviously you've worked for a number of, you know, some of the fastest growing unicorns in the space, but also working for big execs. How have you seen the, I guess, how open have the different types of employers been to that personal branding based on their size? Um, have they been more open maybe in the smaller companies or has it been the same or what has been a trend that you've noticed in terms of personal branding and how much they allow of it from their employees? Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, I think, well, it may just be a, a technology thing mm. that everyone is kind of very, very open. And, you know, for example, I'll have colleagues who've been former Olympians or wow. whatever and, and people actually in both environments love to hire people who have some kind of story yeah. about them. It's like, you know, I was a former Olympian, I did this, but now I'm working in technology. And mm. so again, it's more that branding. And I don't think that is different either at the, the small companies or the big companies. I think you tend to get, I don't know why, more of those personalities at smaller companies. Mm -hmm. um, I think just because when you have a smaller company and they're hiring and they're like, wow, who's this person coming in with all this story? Yeah. Um, 
and and you and just generally smaller companies you, you tend to attract some more interesting characters but yeah, um I yeah I, I don't think there is a, a huge difference i think um at bigger companies there's definitely more guidelines and sensitivities to be aware of. for example if you're working for a public company you sometimes have to be careful mm. what you're sharing um and similarly at smaller companies sometimes people may cross the line a, a little bit more because when you're in like a smaller company and it's growing and you're typically working longer hours you're taking on more responsibility because there aren't people there to do it mm. so you build a huge sense of community and family within that company and you do know everyone you know when they go out but then they may be like posting something you're like wow i wouldn't have really you, yeah. you've, you've kind of crossed a little bit of a line there um yeah what do you think about like colleagues following you on like instagram or social media for example is that something you do or not um i am holding a microphone right now um do you want to sing us a song no i'm, I'm actually 